Welcome to Ducks No Sports, and this week, oh baby, it's finally here. We are previewing week one of the CFL season. It's going to be a great week, because give it up to the CFL uh, schedule makers, because week one, all these matchups are pretty compelling. But we'll start with the first game of the season, as the Saskatchewan Rough Riders travel to Iver Winston to take on the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Uh, should be a good matchup. I mean, on one side you have Saskatchewan, where everything's new in uh, Ryderville these days. I mean, new coach in a cha- Chamberlain, you know, new offensive weapons. Same old QB, a few new faces on defense like Odell Willis, the former mayor of Swaggerville. Maybe still is mayor of Swaggerville. Maybe Saskatchewan is a new uh, sw- Swaggerville. Only time will tell. But with Saskatchewan, I mean... Not much expected coming in for them this year. I mean, you still got Durant, yes, who's still a solid uh, quarterback. But it's going to be a rough ride, I think, for Saskatchewan this year. Chamberlain's going to take his lumps. Everybody's going to take their lumps this year. It's Saskatchewan, especially going into a place where Hamilton's going to be a pretty tough team to play, who a lot of people think are great cup uh, contenders this year, like me. And I think uh, this game... If they want to win this game, they gotta they gotta come and play. I mean, they gotta get a lot of breaks this game. They gotta make sure the new offense is clicking because they showed us nothing in the preseason. Let's be honest, their two games to get blown out. Saskatchewan did not look good, so I don't expect much from Saskatchewan this game. And on the other side, you got the Hamilton Tiger Cats coming off a pretty good year last year. Went to the East Final, but for losing to uh, the Bombers. And the Tiger Cats are going to play a little game this year called Catch Me If You Can. Because when you got weapons like Chris Williams, Grant, Andy Fantuz, Dave Stalla, you know, Sam Shaguer, I mean, that is a stellar, right? That might be the best receiving core in the league right there. I mean, that is stellar. I mean, you can't stop, you can't stop all of them. And you still got a pretty good running back in uh, Avon Coburn, who I'm a big Coburn fan. And I'm glad Hamilton brought him back because he brings a lot of swagger, if you will, to uh, the Cats. And brings a lot of personality to, to the league, too. So good to see him back in the CFL. And I just think Fan 2 is playing his old team. I think he's going to put on a show for the old fans back in uh, R- R- Ryderville. And I just believe with, uh, with uh, Burris there now, sh- he wants to show that he still has it. And if you watch the preseason like me... Burris looks sharp. Burris, that deep ball was working for him. He was finding Shiger open. He was finding Chris Williams. I mean, this offense is be pretty potent. My only question for Hamilton is how are they going to create pressure? Because with Perch, their big offensive, their big d- defensive signing from the Empton Eskimos d- defensive end, you know, he's out the first game. He won't be playing game one. So I'm a little worried. I don't know how they're going to create pressure. I expect a lot of, I think, Hamilton this year, I think you're gonna see a lot of linebacker uh, blitzes. I expect Jamal Johnson to come off the come off um, the linebacker and be a beast this game. I expect a lot of blitzes from him. And this uh, defensive backfield, you know, they picked up uh, uh, Jeffrey Tinsdale this week. Uh, great, great, uh, great pickup. I mean, you know, played there before, knows what he's doing, know, knows the defense, and goes back with a. F- a uh, familiar uh, partner back there in Bo Smith. I mean, should be very, very good. And I think this game is going to get out of hand. I think Hamilton is just miles ahead of, ahead of Saskatchewan. And I think Hamilton can win this game by three touchdowns. I mean, I just think they're going to start fast. They're going to finish fast. And this game could be over by halftime. So I expect Hamilton win this win this game in a blowout. Game two this week is, oh baby, a great cup rematch as the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and their problems travel down to BC Place to take on the BC Lions. Okay, we'll start with the Bombers here. Like I said in my preview of the East, not huge on the Bombers this year. You know, have a lot of problems going in. Offense was a problem, and the offense even took a bigger blow this week as uh, Garrett, their starting uh, running back, goes down for the year. You know, sucks for him, you know. But it sounds like the Bombers aren't going to go and sign a guy off the street like uh, Wes Cates or Reynolds. 
or Fred or bring back uh, Fred Reed. I think he's actually still hurt, so it would make no sense. But they're going to stay within like they did l- 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 last year. Sounds like uh, s- the former uh, Bengal Chad Simpson is uh, going to be the starter there. Uh, I wonder be interested in how many reps he gets because I don't know how much uh, reps he got in a p- practice because Garrett was the man. But Winnipeg, like I said, uh, their defense is going to have to play this year even better than they did last year, which I don't see happening. I mean, because with Garrett going down, that hurts their offense so much. And this is a team who doesn't extend drives. Let's just say this. They were last in the league in uh, long drives. I think if Buck Pierce starts throwing it out and running like like he's like a, like a crazy man out there, I don't see this team surviving. And I think Winnipeg could be in for a long, long day in B- BC place. Because on the other side, you got the BC Lions. Hands down, the best team in the league. Like, can we be honest right now? Like, who is better than the BC Lions right now? I don't think anybody. I mean, a great receiving core. G. Roy Simon, who is only 67 yards away from becoming the all-time leading receiver. We'll get, get that in a minute. But guys like Bruce... You know, you know, Foster and et cetera and et cetera and et cetera. I mean, opponent offense, Andrew Harris in the backfield. I mean, we talk about the Thai Cats having lethal offense. BC's, at, they're like neck and neck because BC is a very good offense. Well, that's why they won the, that's obviously why they won the great cup last year because of their great offense. And I believe BC, with all those weapons and defense, and they still have a pretty good defense. Defense underrated, but they still have a pretty good defense. And on one side, you got one team in Winnipeg who has all the problems in the world, all those offseason problems. And BC, who things are looking more up and up as each day passes. And I just believe BC Lions win this game by about eh, two scores. Won't be crazy. I mean, the Winnipeg Blue Lawrence did go to the Great Cup last year. We have to give them some respect. But I think BC is just that much better than the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Like I said before, though, um, 67 yards from uh, G. Roy Simon coming the all-time leader in our receiving yards. Um, Very interesting how they do this this week because Winnipeg has a pretty good defense. hands Probably hands down the best defense in the league. And if they think, like, they just want to feed him the ball all game, I don't think it's going to work. I think you have to spread it out still. Don't worry about the record. Because the record's going to come. Like, unless he goes down with a with with a with a injury or something like that. But the record will come, so you don't need to feed him the ball. You don't have to give him the record this game. So if you're BC right now, don't worry about the record. Because the record will come. And if you think you're feed him... The ball stay, you want to get maybe this this record just out of the way, maybe be over before the first half. I think that's a mistake and something they'll regret because Winnipeg did lead the league last year in turnovers and they do that. You know, this game could get ugly on for 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 for, uh, BC if they start doing that. So if you're BC, just take a deep breath, relax, feed them the ball when necessary, but don't overfeed them the ball because the record will come. But that being said, though, I think he gets the record this week. And I think he gets in the first half. But that's just me. Yep, Winnipeg. Gonna have a long year. Third game on Saturday. Oh, baby. This is gonna be good. The Toronto Argonauts traveling down to Edmonton, of course. Everybody knows the big trade this uh, offseason. R- 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 Ricky Ray to the Argonauts. And Steven Giles to the Edmonton Eskimos. We'll start with the Argonauts first. Um, Argonauts in the preseason, not bad. Not bad. Not great, but not... If I was giving them a grade, I would say B-. minus. You know, good thing. Ricky Ray looks good. You know, but the thing with the Argonauts, the defense is all right. You know, they lost some veterans there. Their defense really let them down last year. And with Ricky Ray, who is a Hall of Famer, yes, hands down, one of the greatest quarterbacks to play in the CFL, I still don't see who, who, who is he throwing to. You know, Derby could have a great year. I'm a big 
Derby fan, he could have a great year. Barnes, if he decides to show up most weeks, then he could have a great year too. But I just think with this, this offense has to go through Boyd. And Boyd, to me, Boyd has to step his game up too. I mean, he bitched all last year about not getting the ball, but they're, they were down all the time. Like, why well, does he want the ball? They're, all, they're always down. So I think if Boyd takes the game to a next level, that means catching balls out of the out of the backfield and you know taking it to the ne- to the ne- ne- next level i think this offense could be good but i just don't think with this offense not being that great and the argonauts defense being average at best i just don't see the argonauts staying around much for the season just because this team is not built well i mean this team a year ago this team looked great they're coming off a great year but it seems like the year before that was just lightning in a bottle. Clearly wasn't real. And Corey Boyd might be the best running back in the league, but for the Argonauts to be successful, Corey Boyd is going to need to have to touch the ball. The other side, the Edmonton Eskimos, who made a controversial decision this offseason, to say the least, trading their fu- their future Hall of Famer for Stephen Giles, who a lot of people don't give enough respect for Stephen Giles, but I'm not one of those guys... Eskimo fans, as I love Stephen Giles. I think he's a great, great talent. And I truly believe Stephen Giles, in the right situation, which I think is a pretty good situation with some great receivers like Fred Stamps, I think this is going to be a great offense. And I truly believe Stephen Giles is going to have a coming out season. I mean, people are going to show, people don't give enough respect. They will give respect by the end of the year because I think Stephen Giles is going to have a break out year and I believe Steven Giles is going to outperform Ricky Ray in this game and I believe the Edmonton Eskimos beat the Toronto Argonauts and people proven at the end of this game they'll be saying in Edmonton Ricky who and our final game our only game on can on can on Canada Day Montreal at Calgary uh we'll start with the Alouettes Interesting um, coming in the season. Nobody's talking about the Alouettes. I mean, no one. Which, aren't you scared about that too? I mean, you still have Anthony Calvillo. Best pocket passer in the history of the CFL? Yeah. Jamal Richardson. Best receiver in the CFL. You know, Whitner, great right in the backfield. I mean, this, this is still a pretty good team. Last time I checked, Jim Pop is still the GM, the best GM in the league. And Trustman is still the madman coach. So I still believe the Montreal Alouettes will still be a great team this year. Are they guaranteed wins coming on the field like a few years ago? No, they'll have to earn their wins. But I still believe Montreal, everybody's sleeping in Montreal this year. I'm not because I still think Montreal could still go to the Great Cup. They are going to be that good. And their defense is nothing to feel bad about because their defense is still pretty good. Their offense is still pretty good with some of the best players to ever play in the C- CFL. Other side, you have Calgary. You know, up and down year last year, you know, I really thought they were going to win the Great Cup. You know, Burris had a horrible year. You know, he, he, he's out of town. Reynolds is out of town. It's a total new offense. Drew Tate, who uh, finally has a grasp on the offense. I mean, it's pretty clear last year. At the end of the season, he showed he had a real grasp on the offense. And I'm a big fan of Drew Tate. I really think Drew Tate is... One of the next big stars in the CFL, next to uh, Travis uh, Lule out there in B- BC. I really like Drew Tate. When it's all said and done, I think in this game, I think the young buck is going to show the old man that the future is now. And I truly believe that Calgary Stampeders sh- bounce back and have a great year this year. And I believe it starts in week one, and the Calgary Stampeders beat the Much Alouettes by. A field goal. It's going to be a close game. Well, this is going to be a wacky CFL game, like like 34-33. Some crazy Canuck score. So to recap, I like the Hamilton Tirecats to run over the Rough Riders. I like the BC Lions to beat the Bombers in the Great Cup re- rematch. And for G. Roy Simon to pass Milt Stiegel, if that happens, that's going to be historic. And I expect Steven Giles to outperform Ricky Ray and beat the Toronto Argonauts. And I expect the young buck, Drew Tate, to outshow that old wolf, Anthony Calvillo, and beat him in Cowtown. All right, that's uh, week one preview. 
stay tuned because it's going to get better and better as the weeks go on because this is going to be one hell of a CFL season. Can't wait. I'm so jacked for CFL season. It's going to be great. So until next time, I'm Eric Darcy saying I'm Ducks, and I know sports. Kind of.